This is us, Bertus and Isis, on our way from the Netherlands to Italy to sign the deeds to our dream house. We put in our offer in October 2022 and signed a preliminary contract on the 1st of November. The month and a half of waiting in between then and now is pretty nerve-wracking, but the wait is over and we can almost call this farmhouse ours. To be surrounded by nature, to sink our roots into the ground, to breathe, to feel connected to the land. That is what we've been dreaming of the past 15 years. Until fairly recently, we had no idea that we would find all these things in the north of Italy. To be honest, it has taken us a little bit by surprise. We've explored the idea of moving to the south of Sweden, Germany, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, and for a very brief moment, the Canary Islands, before settling on the thought of Italy. By the time our hearts finally landed in the forested mountains of the Lange in Piemonte, we had traveled to nearly all corners of the country. It's funny how place can speak to you, how you can instantly feel at home somewhere you've never been before. How the mountains and the trees and the birds all seem to be whispering, yes, yes, this is your place to settle down. We kind of accidentally bought a farm with 16 hectares of land, which is just under 40 acres, I believe. Half of which are woods and wilderness, and half is meadow, as well as a small stretch of field which has been used for growing crops. When we started actively looking for a house about a year ago, we were looking for something quite a bit smaller with only three to four hectares of land. We saw 30 houses spread over three house hunting trips to Italy over a course of nine months. All 30 of them had something to fall in love with. Some had one or one and a half hectare, some came with five to six hectares, and some had as much as 19 or even an insane 28 hectares of land. Some were in a really poor structural state, others were very nice but not for us, and two broke our hearts a little. It has been quite a journey. The thing is that we didn't choose our house for the massive amount of land. We chose the house and the views and the location. We chose the way this place made us feel right at home. The land just came with the project. And in a way, the house chose us. If it weren't for one enthusiastic gem of a real estate agent who in hindsight magically understood our dream better than we ourselves did at the time, we would never have visited it. After seeing three other properties with him on a super hot day in the middle of July, he dragged us along to this other house that we might find interesting. As we drove up to the farm, we realized that we had seen the listing online. It was a house that we had loved at first sight. But as it was a long way out of our budget, we never even considered making an appointment for a visit.
It didn't want to let go of us, this house. It stayed on our minds. We returned three more times to just sit on the little bench next to the front door, to explore the land, to get to know its edges. After going back and forth for a few months, moving through our fear of having our hearts broken once again, we finally put in an offer of 90,000 euros under the asking price. After all, we had nothing to lose. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Isn't that what they say? And amazingly, mind-blowingly, it got accepted during our third house viewing trip in Italy. Fast forward to today. We went to the bank and the notary and put down around 60 second shares per person. In Italy this type of transaction is still done the old fashioned way with cashier's checks. And when there's two buyers and four owners everything needs to be signed eightfold. But now we have the keys. Our farmstead, or cascina in Italian, sits on the ridge of a hill at 555 meters above sea level, situated in the south of the province of Piemonte, where the Alps and the Apennines merge. The cascina is surrounded by forests, hazelnut groves and meadows, and on a clear day we can see the Mont Blanc and the Matterhorn peaks from our garden. The farm consists of several buildings, including a tiny chapel, stables, an old winery, and a hen house. Bertus is going to show you around. Hi guys, so here we are on the first day of our new adventure. 
Behind me is uh, yeah, our new house. It's an old farmstead made in Pietra di Langa. So built on old stones in a very traditional way. Um, yeah, we're very excited to go and live here. But as you can see, a lot needs to be done. But let's show you around the property first. The farmhouse consists of two parts, a um, more recent part and an older part. The recent part is over there. Um, it's built in the 1960s. Uh, and it's in a sort of habitable state. It, it will need some sprucing up and new um, piping and electricity and everything um, in the future. But for now, um, it's a place where we can stay and sort of keep ourselves warm as soon as we have a new gas tank <laughs> to run the central heating on. Um, and on this side, or like the middle part of the U-shaped building is an old farmhouse, which was probably built around 1900. Um, but we can't be 100% certain because um, the owners, the previous owners didn't remember or don't really know. And we still have to dive into the city archives, maybe at some point at a later stage. <laughs> and then on the right, there's the old granary and stables, um, which uh, yeah, look like a granary and stables on the inside as well, of course. The, um, I forgot to say, the old farmhouse is in fairly decent condition. It probably doesn't need a lot of structural work, except for the roof. It really does need a new roof. And in a later video, we will probably, we will show you um, why. <laughs> so keep watching if you want to know. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other buildings as well, um, so we will take you there in a second. We're at the uh, the back of the of the house now, at the end of the stables. Here's a small pigsty, which used to house three pigs. Uh, one of the previous owners was a butcher. He uh, had three pigs here, one to sell, no, one to eat and two to sell. Behind the old farmstead is a big warehouse. It was built in the 70s somewhere. It still has a, uh, um, it still houses agriculture machines, um, but it has an asbestos roof. Uh, so at some point we would need to replace the roof or take away the whole structure. And we are thinking about the last one because uh, taking it all away because it takes away the view from the farmstead of the Alps. So we rather prefer the view of the Alps than have a big warehouse there. Next to the new warehouse is a older warehouse which currently has some firewood in it. We are going to, uh, well definitely going to keep this one because it's pretty and at some point in the future we might turn it into a holiday cottage if we get, get all the permissions that we would need for this. Next to the old warehouse is a uh, collection of uh, different rooms, uh, old agricultural, agricultural uh, outbuildings that were used to uh, have chickens, the polayo, the lenyaya, which had the uh, firewood, and there was also a drying uh, storage place for chestnuts. Across the street from uh, our farmstead is a uh, is a building that has two stories. It was probably uh, well, it was used as a winery in the basement, and uh, the upper part was used as a granary. The property came with this really cute chapel. Uh, it's made in a um, dry stone wall construction. 
We're not sure about the, the date of the chapel, how old it is. It, it is 19th century at least, but it might be older as well. Some rumors say maybe late medieval, but we still have to, you know, dig into the archives or something or find people who know about this. Moving to Italy and renovating this farm is a whole new chapter in our lives. The craziest and boldest yet, but also one that feels so right in our bones. We're glad you're here and we can't wait to share our journey along this unpaved road with you.